Welcome back, fifth graders. We're looking at Unit 7, Lesson 14. Um, I've got a bit of a cold, so bear with me through here. I sound a little stuffy. I apologize about that. Um, in this unit and lesson, we're looking at writing fractions as decimals. Now, this will be a nice review. We did some of this already earlier this year. This diagram off to the right here shows how to do that. Remember, you take the numerator and you divide that by the denominator. So here they took 1 and divided by 3. In order to make that possible, you have to put a decimal point and a 0. And then you can go ahead and start the division. Eventually, you'll notice that with 1 third, it is a repeating decimal because you'll continue to add zeros and you'll continue to multiply by 3. So 1 third is known as 0 0.3 repeating. Okay, fifth graders, on this slide, we are showing how you use long division to change a fraction into a decimal. Notice they have all the problems set up for you here. For example, one-fourth is like taking one divided by four. And we would show that by adding a couple zeros, placing our decimal point up, four goes into ten two times, uh, which is two, sorry. And we bring down our 0, that's 20. 4 goes into 25. Now, some of you may remember that 1 fourth is one of those facts you should have memorized. 1 fourth or 1 quarter is 25 cents or 0.25. Okay, so we can keep going here. 2 eighths, um, that's 2 divided by 8. And again, they have it set up right here for you. I'm going to just solve it here where I have a little room. I can add a decimal and zeros to any number. And I can add as many zeros as I want. It's still 2. So 2 goes into 20 twice, which is 16. I bring down my 0. I got 40. 8 goes into 40 five times. Again, my decimal point needs to come straight up. That's actually 0.25. Now you can say that's the same answer as the first one. Well, we learned two chapters ago that 2 eighths can reduce to a fraction of one-fourth. So they are equal, and that proves that they're equal. Okay, let me get rid of uh, some of my work here, and then we're going to go ahead and solve uh, some more problems. All right, so the next one, I've got six-eighths. Well, that's, sorry, I did that wrong, six Divide by 8, we'll go point zero. Six, uh, 8 goes into 6 7 times. Again, my decimal point comes straight out, which is 56. When I subtract, I get 4. Now, if you don't have a zero, since it's a decimal, I can add as many zeros as I want. So I just add a zero. Now I can keep dividing. And it's 0.75 is my answer. Okay, now I'm going to speed some of this up a little bit. This one, there's a shortcut. Two-fourths, I recognize, is one-half. I know that one-half from before is 0.5. Um, Three-eighths, well, we better divide that one out. Okay, I'm going to kind of squeeze this in here. That's three divided by eight. Eight goes in there three times which is 24. When I subtract, I get 6. Bring down the 0. Go 7 times, which is 56. When I subtract, I get 4. Bring down the 0. 8 goes into 40 five times. Again, that was on that sheet we gave you. 3 eighths is 0.375. Okay, and the last one, 7 eighths. That's 7 divided by 8. Again, to start out, I'm going to go 70.0. It's still 7 because my decimal point. 8 goes into uh, 78 times. My decimal point comes straight up. That's 64. When I subtract, I get 4. I like that number with 8 because I know 8 goes into 40 when I bring this 0 down 5 times. So 7 eighths equals point. Eight, five. So, 
Um, obviously, we could check all this with a calculator. Remember, you take the numerator, 7, divided by the denominator, 8. Okay, 7, 11, 7, 8, 11, and 12 are shown on your ticket. And I want you to uh, sh actually show your work in the long division so you can change any fraction into a decimal. On this slide, we're just taking a look at some number lines to look at how fractions and decimals relate. So on this first one, you can see that we have fourths. One-fourth is the same thing as the decimal 0.25, which is also equivalent to 0.250, or the fraction 2 eighths. Um, the next big one to know is 0.5, which is the same thing as 2 fourths, which is equal to 1 half. And that is also equal to 0 0.500, which is also equal to 4 eighths, which again is the equivalent fraction for 1 half. Um, so 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0 0.75, those are the big ones we want you to memorize. Remember 0 0.75 is 3 fourths. Again, you can see that that is the equivalent of 6 eighths or 0 0.750 as well. Because remember 6 eighths is equivalent to 3 fourths. On the eighths line, that's just showing you some more decimal and fraction relationships. But again, the biggest ones are 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0.75. So here's just asking, what patterns do you see? Well, again, I noticed some equivalent fractions, some common decimals. Um, you'll notice that it's going from 0 eighths or 0 fourths all the way to 1 whole, 4 fourths or 8 eighths. And then decimal numbers that are equal in value, I've already circled those for you. Uh, their equal ones would be 0, which would be like 0 fourths or 0 eighths, and 1 whole, which would be the same thing as 4 fourths or 8 eighths. So again, just showing you the relationship of fractions and decimals on a number line. Okay, baseball fans, we got some baseball uh, trivia here for you. It says, in baseball and softball, batting average describes how well a player hits. It's not the mean, even though it is called the average. Remember, the mean is when we add up, like, all the, um, you know, several games and then divide by how many. So batting average is not the same as the average we find in mean, median, mode, and range. Okay, so... Um, it's a fraction of the average, uh, the batting average is a fraction with a number of hits over a number of at-bats. These fractions are usually written as decimals with three places. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Those of you who are baseball fans probably already know how. In the first problem, number 24, it says Lauren got three hits out of nine at-bats. So that means I would go 3 divided by 9. One hint is you're always going to be taking the smaller number divided by the bigger number here to get a decimal. <clears throat> it makes sense. Somebody can't have more hits than they have at bat. So it's always going to be the smaller number divided by the bigger number. Okay, so when I add my decimal to my 0, I know that 9 will go in there 3 times, which is 27. Now, watch this. As soon as I get 3, that's what I started with, my next number is going to be 0, I know that this number is going to repeat. So that's actually 0.3 repeating. That line over the 3 means that it's going to repeat on and on and on. But for batting average, they like to show 3 decimal places. They like to show the number in hundreds. So like 500, we know if someone bats 500, that's like 50%. That's half of the at-bats that they had. This person was .33, okay, which is bat their batting average. Lauren's batting average would be 333, okay? That would be her average. All right, Felicia is on the softball team. In her first eight at-bats, she got five hits. Now, they just twisted the words around. Remember, we have to take the hits which is 5, divided by the at-bats, which is 8. So basically, we're looking at 8 into 5.0 or 50. So 8 times 6 is 48. We subtract, we get 2. I can add and bring down another 0. 8 goes in there twice, which is 16. And again, I like to see that 4 when I'm dividing by 8, because 8 goes into 40 five times. So... The decimal is 0.625, 
and we would say that person is batting, sorry, I messed that up, not 650, but 625. Now you will notice when I write 625, that's her batting average. Again, the decimal is 0 0.625. You're going to notice that she batted higher than 50% or higher than 500. Well, she got five hits at eight out of bats. Four out of eight would be at actually 500, so that makes sense. All right, I'm going to go ahead and breeze through this slide pretty quickly. Divisibility rules is essentially saying can you divide with this number equally or nicely. So looking at one rule, you're looking at the divisibility by two. So if a number is divisible by two or can be divided by two, it's another way of saying it, um, the number would have to end in a zero, two, four, six, or eight. Essentially, that number has to end in an even number. So 136 is divisible. Just like 20 would be, it ends in a 0. Just like 12 would be, it ends in a 2. 84 would be, it ends in a 4. 96 would be, because it ends in a 6. And, say, 1008 would be, because it ends in an 8. So again, if it ends in an even number, it will be divisible by 2. 283 is not divisible, because it ends in an odd number, 3. So not divisible. Next rule is divisibility by 5, so again, can be divided by 5. The number has to end in a 0 or a 5. So here's one example, 1,760 is divisible by 5 because it ends in that 0. Um, another example would be 105 because it ends in a 5. So as a non-example, 506 would not be divisible because it ends in a 6. Remember, it has to end in a 0 or 5 to be divisible by 5. Last rule is divisible by 10, or being able to be divided by 10. It has to end in a 0. So 790 is divisible by 10, just like 1,000 would be because it ends in a 0. Just like 920 would be because it ends in a 0. Just like 240 would be because it ends in a 0. 809, however, is not divisible by 10 because it ends in a 9. Remember, it has to end in a zero for it to be divisible or divided by 10. Okay, after uh, we have learned the divisibility rules, remember twos are any number that is uh, ends in an even number. So this one is divisible. 24 is divisible by 2. 65 is not. 110 is. Remember, zero is even. 108 is. And the other two ends in, end in odd, so they're not. Divisible by 5, the rule is ends at 0 or 5. So 65, 110, and 215. Okay, there's three of those that are divisible by 5. Number 3, divisible by 10, it must end in a 0, 110. You can see where they might ask a question like, what number above is divisible by all 3, 2, 5, and 10? And it is 110. Now again, the, the reason these divisibility rules can help you is we have to do a lot of reducing fractions and dividing and it just helps you know what sh what should you start with what should you divide by alright on this slide we're going to apply what we've learned to a word problem number 27 says Carl's baseball team had a picnic the coach bought three and a half pounds of potato salad for the picnic paying two dollars and twenty five cents per pound how much did the potato salad cost so I know that if I have to pay $2.25 per pound and I'm buying three and a half pounds, I can multiply to solve this problem. Now, the only problem is I have a fraction against a decimal. So, should I change both to decimals? What do you think, Mara and Kaylin? We know how to multiply decimals, don't we? Yeah. Okay, so let's change it to a decimal. We know one half is what decimal, ladies? Point five. So I'm going to change that to the number 3.5. So I'm changing 3 and 1 half now to 3.5. Okay, then I'm going to multiply that by $2.25 or 2.25. So Mara said she's going to solve it for me and she's going to use lattice. So I'm going to set it up for her. 
So remember to use lattice, just ignore the decimals for now. Set up your problem and then Kaylin will add our decimal in when Mara is finished solving. Alright, so I'm just going to draw all my lines here to get Mara ready to go. Okay, so 3 times 5 equals 15. And then 5 times 5 equals 25. And then 2 times 5 is 10. And then you can do that again. And 3 times 2 is 6. And then 3 times 2 again is 6. Good, so now go ahead and add, Mara. So 5 times plus nothing is 5. Mm -hmm. 5 plus 2 is 7. 6 plus 2 is 8. 6 plus 1 is 7, and then you put your 0. Excellent. Okay, so now Mara is going to hand it off to Kaylin, and we'll, Kaylin will show you where to put the decimal now. You have to move it over three spaces. Okay, so our final answer then becomes 7 and 875 thousandths. But wait, it has to be money. Oh, that's right. We're talking about money here. So let's do a safe estimate and let's bring $7.88. And 88 cents. That looks more like a money answer then. All right, fifth graders, uh, you have gotten uh, to the end of the lesson, and this is your ticket to class. On your ticket on the back, we are going to get into two digit divisors. So, what Miss Scott and I would like you to do is just practice and see if you can use the steps that we learned for our one digit divisors and with our decimals and see if you can come up with the correct answer for this problem using a two-digit divisor. We'd like to try, have you try it before we show you how, and see how many people already know how to do it. We'll see you tomorrow.